Hello everyone and welcome to some late night steel division 2 as we go into the semi-finals of division 2 of the steel division league with a really hard matchup as on the left side we haven't lou a well-known fan and friend of the channel a guy from austria a guy with a fixed hand it's el bowser on the right side we have the leader of the foxes we have mr fairy rommel himself coming in here with the first piachotti tedoitza and a bowser is playing a division that we haven't seen from him yet first dfl here coming in with a good amount of tractions should be a really hot match um before we go in though once more classic shout out first look at the bracket how people got here fairy rommel moving over colonel koenig and El Bowser in a really, really tight match against Lolly coming in here into the semifinal. So, really, really good games there. Fire Normal in a really strong showing there, and El Bowser really in an absolute clutch match versus Lolly in the round of eight in the quarterfinals. And if you want to support these players, and especially the ones uh, that will win Division 2, and you want to give them a bit more reason to fight for, you can help out getting us there via the match arena. As you can do sponsor quests on the side, or you can m contribute money directly. If you get over $200, the winner of Division 2 will also get the prize pool of 20 bucks. Always, for now, money is all reserved for the for Division 1. Um, yeah, help out. Make the prize pool a bit bigger. Easy way to do so here with the sponsor quests on the side, or with maybe buying. The Discord donor role. And yeah, if you want to find more information, you can find them on our website, playsdl.com, uh, where you, for example, can find rules or stats about the group stage, thanks to Roguish's nice analysis of the Sotbot results and the pick and ban results. So, yeah, all of this is here as well. Um, but with that said, let's jump back in and let's have a look onto the bands before we go in. As the two players had some interesting bans here as well. We have Fire Rommel coming in with banning the 4th Ultra Mager, 17th SS, Hatra, 97th and 26th Panzer. So a hell of a lot of access bands there already. Only 97th as an allied band. And then Bowser adds three more access bands to this as well. Only Task was 45 and 2nd Infantry. And then 20th Panzer, 28th Vigor, and Hardtonek being banned. 28th Vigor absolutely makes sense against Fairy Rommel. He loves this divi uh, uh, division, and he loves it especially on Orchard East. So, banning it here. Really wise choice in my eyes from a Bowser. Um, and yeah, it's no wonder that we end up, ended up with two allied divisions, especially as these two are both pretty top-end, as with five, uh, with only three allied bands and seven Axis bands. This is pretty... Heavily anti-axis here, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, anti-axis here. So allies are pretty open. Um, the division we have are pretty solid for this map as well. DFL has good 2,000 meter range, long range howitzers, and then great infantry forty fights in the town and up in the north. Whilst on the right side, the DFL has uh, the the first Polish as good infantry for the town fight, has solid infantry for the north as well, and has T-34s that can support on all these mid-ranges really, really nicely. Um, air plays a pretty solid role on Orsha East as well. They have both good air taps too, A8 tap being solid. Infantry-wise, they're pr both pretty equal, I would say. Both in the top 10 when it comes to infantry in Steel Division. And I'm not quite sure who has the leg up there. I guess it comes really down to how you use them. Like, Shocks and uh, Legionnaires and Trilliers, all pretty good infantry, pretty cost efficient infantry, but so are the original Kani and the Dejan Cholgavi, or the, uh, especially the, ah, we don't see any of the double DT units with SVTs here, just yet, but a lot of units coming in, Sapergi, pretty standard unit, ooh, a P PO2! Recon plane from the get-go. Surprised. We don't see them too often. I mean, it's only 10 points, but if there's any, any MEAA, and there will be a bow force coming in from the get-go, 
these things basically die instantly. So, interesting investment here. They also don't really scout the enemy deployment as they only come in later. As, as you can see, they go f slower than the units below them. As partisans rush all over the map here. But PDRs on the other side in position. Uh -huh. Not quite in the north, but partisans couldn't get the kill into the PTS squad there. Just runs straight through. Partisans over here not quite able to find any kills either. Uh, Legionnaires and Bimp will get the kill onto the PTRS. Also, we have Vanguard for El Bowser, Maverick for the first Polish here. So interesting setup there as well. M3 guns, pretty cheap, relatively cost efficient guns. 1250 meter range, 70 millimeter penetration. Pretty good against T-70s, pretty good against the weaker uh, T-34s. Against the T-34Es, they don't do as much. Uh, shocks here, dueling it out. And the first fighter already out. Already on the hunt for the enemy off-map plane, but they might. this Yak-1B might come too early, as it will fly through a lot of flak fire till it gets there, and might be pinned down, yeah, will be pinned down before it can reach the enemy off-map plane. So the off map plane actually gets through, actually the reaction here of our player in red too fast. And that cost him. M8 helping out in the center. Two Max uh, still standing. But you know, Kani pushed back. Stralki coming up. Last over here. We have the Dejant Jolgovi sitting in the forest. But on the other side, the Legionnaires come in. And the long ranges obviously will annihilate them. In the short ranges, it's relatively close. But they can deal great damage there as well, especially thanks to the bar being an automatic rifle. <coughs> Off map being called in over here. Sh should allow the shocks to move in there. But the sea fire is flying around on the south. Good recon plane that also can kill off uh, Po 2s easily with its main guns. Can also keep maybe an IL-2 a bit busy if those would try to come in but the south of our red player is holding for now the M1 gun coming in Legionnaires and Beam Tranape holding the line in the north but the T-34s and half tracks move through and yeah the M1 gun is badly needed here now M3 gun maybe could get into a nice spot where it could side shot any units moving through the open but this flag here stops El Bowser from getting the tick, even though he gets the flag over here thanks to the off map for now. Shocks should be able to move in there soon and take that out. Mortars coming in, bazookas coming in. Really light front line for both sides. Kind of everywhere, like it's no massive push anywhere. They all have units all across the board, but due to air investments and so on, they really are not that strong on the ground and. This will make it even harder here to be strong on the ground for Fari Normal, losing two units in transport here. And the M3 guns just dealing enough damage with five damage to fully wiping out the squadron and not just a couple of those units inside. So the Stalky there being completely wiped out. Bimp coming in on the north. Ochiel Kani coming in to help out in the north. But then maybe try to push, but I'm not sure if a push is then real, is really the right idea. As the Legionnaires and the Tanape holding the line there pretty nicely. And the half track here helping moving forward with the Legionnaires. We'll get a Bowser another flag. 1410 for now. Off map coming in in the south. There's no AA here for Fabric Normal. Some artillery howards, uh, some. M3 howitzers coming in as well, so push through the open could be well supported by those if they sit around here, help out with 2000 meter range, maybe one moving in through here, maybe, allow maybe allowing to get some push onto these flags, which could allow for 59 then. Material yours coming in, flag over here, also obviously only weakly hold by these two Maxim MGs, which if the M8 Ever finds another unit that can support them, could be pushed out quite easily. Mortars with radio, one of the big strengths of DFL. Yes, they are more, five points more expensive nowadays, but they are still so good if you can use them together with radio. <coughs> so damn accurate, especially if you get them relatively close to the enemy. 
And this one is pretty decently close, so that Maxim might have a problem. Half-track here, still holding the line. Finally a PTRS comes around, that will most likely be able to take it out. But the units here of El Bowser holding the line nicely, whilst his main reinforcements currently go to the south. T-34 though is around, tries to deal with the M3 gun. He's 70s in the south, still around as well, so the push here for Bells are not really coming together yet. Not quite having enough forces down there. But in the north, the P02 is scouting for a potential push for Fabi Drommel. We'll see how that goes. Partisans under fire. Punching out Kani. Engaging the units there. Engaging the Legionnaires. Legionnaires. Only one of them engaging. Both would be engaging this would be way better, but yeah, now they try to move forward. Universal Carrier though, with the Dushka, opening up fire now. Haji Alkani pushed back, but so will the Legionnaires. Well, it's the Yak-1B tries to come around here. AAP's a bit further back, so the M, the half-track, the M5 half-track will fall before the Bofors can do anything about it. But good mortar hits here around the Maxims. Forcing them to go back. T-34 is coming in. Good investment in our IIs here for the center. Um, M1 gun is a bit further back though. So they have to be somewhat careful. Of how they get in here. M3 guns obviously with side shots also super scary. But especially the M1 gun here is worrisome. That can get on target. And it would be really really good for El Bowser. That can take out some T-34s. M3 howitzers in the south. Finally find some shots as well. Hitting some infantry hard. 52p on the other side though. Doing a good job as well. So no infantry left on this hill. The Afrique units going down. More legionnaires for the south. But El Bowser not quite fin finding the 59 yet. As we are closing in on to B-Face. T-34 though. Ooh, dangerously close here to the partisans. Partisans not getting the shot off for now. More T-70s coming up. Partisans not trying to chase it down either, but the sea fire is keeping MGs in the north busy. Yes. We have a push now coming over here, but the legionnaires here are pretty nicely positioned. Most likely will be able to open fire onto the moving Dejan Govies here. Yeah, there we go. Original Kani, meanwhile, are in 100 meter range, so will eat in TNT. Well, it's these units here, yeah, we're moving in, and especially the moving part is the problem. Whilst slightly out of range, so the Legionnaires were able to deal a hell of a lot of damage. Two Molotovs flying on top of them though, but yeah, another one of the Dejan Cholkovi, one going down. Second one under heavy fire, Legionnaires need to disengage, but good hits here. And these, this P-26 might get a perfect hit here on a lot of units. Yeah, two half-tracks going down, T-34 and the last remaining half-tracks heavily damaged. Really good bombing run here from El Bowser. Trying to get it off map plane into the center. M1 gun finds a T-34. Second T-34 dangerously close to the partisan still. So really, really good trades here now for our player in blue. M3 howitzer also slowly moving forward here. Slowly trying to deal more damage. Got rid of another T- Oh no, T-34 up on the sill. Sorry, I missed that one. But has to be careful with the M1 gun around. With the M3 howitzers that also can kill it with its heat, the heat shells on this range. Still key LKM coming in. Really, really good unit, but not so sure how well they will do just in front of a M3 howitzer. But more mortars come onto the battlefield as well. I feel like both sides investing a lot into support equipment and maybe a bit too little into direct frontline infantry. As there's actually not that much infantry here on the battlefield for El Bowser. L2 coming in on the north. Gets a partisan, doesn't get any infantry outside of that though. And a good amount of stuff coming in here from the rear other side. Gets some suppers. And this is an interesting game. 14-10 here still for our player in blue. M3 howitzers moving forward. We are about to hit C fa uh, B phase here. Where the income advantage will shift around. Where it will then be our player in red. Paranormal taking over. We have a 59. And it will be... A Bowser who will have to play from a point disadvantage and try to hold the line most likely. As pushing with uh, 45 points less per minute will be a pretty tough job to do. So 
saving a 59 right now would have been better. Like digging in there, but it's pretty close here. Still could maybe make the 59 happen here before the income really starts to kick in. Northern situation. Legionnaires trying to hold the lines. The purse coming in. A mortar over here as well. Good amount of legionnaires and leaders coming in. Four mortars on the battlefield already. Another Sapur coming in. 1311. As the flag over here falls for now as well. And the Sapergi really doing a good job here. Mortar could be really, really helpful here. Allowing this 59. Mortar in the north. Ooh, gets some nice hits in. Not perfect though. As the red infantry is moving forward. Sapurs have to be careful. Have to get the hell out of there. 12 12 situation now. As Fari Rommel is trying to move into El Bazo's units here. 13 11, 12 12. As the Sea Fire is coming in for the IL-2M. Go Force helping out Sea Fire out of 20 millimeters though. So the damage is heavily reduced. Won't be able to do much here. Might even go down to the two A pieces. Yep. Goes down to the rear gunner of the IL-2 and the two. 37mm AA pieces. M10 tank destroyer on the battlefield though. If that can engage the T70s and T34s from a good enough range, it will just shred them into pieces. And the center here is in an interesting spot. No one really able to move at the moment. Uh, mortars could break the stalemate eventually though. Especially as they have radio support. Energy on the fire. Ooh. 52 piece going down in the south. M3 Howard says here. Superior. As they also help out in the south. And one gun and another battery fur. In the north, flag got retaken. So we are back to 1311 as all the other flags around here got taken by. back by. by Rommel. Okay, one flag now. Flag over here. In the hands of a Bowser. Has the 1311 up. But that's obviously a long way. And the big question is. How will Fire Normal's counter push go now in B phase here? Now that Fire Normal will get a good amount extra. Per minute over his opponent. And mortars in the north. Trying to get some good hits in. Not quite succeeding just yet. As Universal Carriers are rolling in. Dushka. On top of them. And the Legionnaires in a nice spot though. But in the need of an entire tank. Sapur here has to be careful. Has the bazooka but it's down to one hit point, And that's obviously pretty painful. You want to have them a bit closer. Pimp up here could be pretty nice as well. Ooh, M1 gun already does it though. 59 now for El Bowser. As El Bowser is also winning the duel in the center now. And this is obviously really terrible. For... Fire normal. It's his it's supposed to be his B face, and the M3 gun and the mortars took out one unit after another. His <coughs> Maxim did also fall. So a really, really rough time here for our player in red right now in the center. Still has a good good couple of minutes of good income to maybe solidify his center again, maybe try to get a counter push in. But the current 17-7 even for El Bowser is really putting some pressure onto Fire Normal. El Bowser with some Real great aggression game, playing the flex perfectly. Obviously, a 18-6 would be the kind of the death sentence here for Fari Normal. And if El Bowser could achieve that, that would be great. M3 gun on the fire. Original Kani and Maxim's here. Trying to keep them at bay, but more M3 guns coming around. Dushka trying to counter it. But the M3 guns and the M1 guns here. Could be brutal. 17-7. Back on the menu. One flag away from an absolute disaster for Fire Rommel. And still five minutes of good income here for Fire Rommel. But the Senator is not looking healthy. Might get an M1 gun. Would be a great pickoff. There's an, another M1 gun up here though. There's an uh, M10 tank destroyer around. So just rolling through with your T-34s afterwards won't be possible either. And we have a nice 16-8 here. We have a nice 16-8. T-70 coming around the south. As the M3 guns get one nice kill. Might get more. 
T70 has to disengage, but more shots will come out around here. Infantry does fall. As a Marauder Bomber comes around again for the center. Eight 227 kilogram bombs. A really great bomber. As these units here are living in danger. North looking pretty nice for uh, Well, Bowser as well. Marauder brings the pain. Yak 1B trying to stop it. Not really capable of doing so though. As the bow force is doing a good amount of stress damage and all the bombs land here. <laughs> Heavy blows here once more for Fire Normal. M3 gun does win the fight against the 52P. M3 gun in the north helping out controlling this open field. Really good positioning there as well from El Bowser. Doing a great job here and has it on a 17-7 again. One more flag to complete disaster here for Fire Normal. As artillery is landing on the south. M3 gun. Trying to get some nice shots in here. Ooh. Maxim goes down. T70 bites the dust as well. In one north M3 gun. Sitting in the center. Getting the Saperis. M3 gun's really, really important asset here. All around the battlefield. They did a great job. Legionnaires able to push the enemy out of here. Not quite having the same CQC power with the first Polish and the T-34 force. Not able to help out in, in, in style. Arjun Lakani here. Nearly going fully down to the hit by the 57mm AP. But will bite the dust right after. And it's so so close to being an 18.6 now. And that would be completely over for the red team here. For the Polish. Bimp coming in. That's we have a good amount more more Macasites. <laughs> Center still really really silent here. Not much happening. So Purse in the south now holding the line as well. But I mean a Bowser only needs to hold this right now and it's still paranormal with the income advantage, so pushing harder is risky here for El Bowser. And even now he has a two flag leeway that he could afford to lose and still be up on a 59. So, yes, an 18 6 would be amazing, but pushing forward too hard could lead in you overextending. So, I like that he stays at a 59. That's way more than, uh, like, that's still good enough here. Still gets a good tick on the enemy. Oh, Giacani. Coming on the south. M3 guns. Coming in with nice hits. Gets a nice one here. On to some units in the south. Mortar coming in as well. Oh, Giacani. Getting hit pretty damn good by the M3 howitzers. Well, it's in the north. Okay. It's a Peugeot Rocks gets the kill. The other side, though, Makassars with the Molotov should be able to get their flamethrowers out against the Sapergi Rocks. So they should be turning pretty decently. E34 is trying to push the units back over here, but it's still in 16 8. And. It's not looking like Pyromal is about to break this anytime soon. Has only 6 minutes remaining on this tick rate. So really. Needs to start considering how to do this, especially as both sides are running out of points in B phase. But at least it's 90 points of income for El Bowser versus only 80 points of income for Fire Rommel. So it's actually a Bowser once more with a slight income advantage there in C phase. Slowly catching up again to Fire Rommel's points. And at the moment, it looks like El Bowser for sure traded better. Yes, it seems like Blue has more stuff on the ground. A lot of T-34s coming in. Uh, hopefully they get places. No, they won't get places as Paranormal does surrender. 1-0 for El Bowser with better than a 2-2-1 KD even. So really, really well done here by the Austrian in game number one. Getting a great victory here with first TFL over our Iranian friend Paranormal. Yes. Yeah, this, this was well done.
GGB P12 Bowser. And gonna see if Fire Normal can bring it back in game number two. Gonna go for a short break, and then we're gonna be back with Fire Normal versus a Bowser game number.